Yo guys, Saber here. This is the first day of the new season, so we'll be starting a new series where I can keep you guys updated with my efforts to qualify for the upcoming official Gwent tournaments. Um, I'll be playing a few ladder games, uh, and I'll explain, try to explain my, my plays in detail, uh, but I won't be doing guides on the decks like I do in some of the other videos. And unlike most other YouTubers, then I will actually be showing all of my games, so whether I win or lose, I will post it, I will post my commentary to it. Because I think that the loss is going to be just as educational as the wins. And I'll try to keep you guys posted on how the meta develops. Like usually there's developments on the meta every single day. Um, so I'll try to, to keep you guys posted on that. And give you some recommendations what the best decks are to play um, most days. So from my own ambitions, I will try to see if I can aim for something like top 16. Um, it's a very short season, I'm not sure if I'll have the time for it, but I really hope it will be possible because, as you might know, there are two qualifiers, there's top 64 and there's top 16. Um, so top 16 will grant me access to both of them, that's the that's the ambition. Maybe I'll, I'll also try to push higher than that, but I think it's going to be difficult with this, uh, the limited time I have in these next three weeks. Um, if I would have to push for crown points, I would probably have to try to go for top 8 or top 3. That will probably be difficult, so for now top 16 will be my main goal. So without further ado, let's jump into our first game. Alright guys, this is the first time I'm opening the game um, this season. So we got some sweet reward points, we have our MMR reset to zero. And uh, apparently we also got a gift. I will take that. Alright, so I think here in the beginning, um, it's always a little bit difficult to choose what deck you want to play because like, you don't really know what to expect, right? The first day, people are playing all sorts of weird, weird stuff. It's also a little bit tough in the beginning because it's only top 500 pro level players that are left on pro level, whereas the remaining several thousands are down in rank 1 to 5. Um, so I think I'll just start with some uh, some uprising here, honestly. Um, honestly, you can kind of play whatever here in the beginning. It's, like, tough to make a good rule for it. I had quite a nice success with this list um, last season. I will try to go with that again. Try to see if we can uh, if we can keep it up. I think there might be an argument to try to run Erden in this list. Uh, maybe instead of um, uh, location card, maybe try to downgrade something else as well. But for the time being, we'll just start with this and then uh, see how it goes. It, it, it was really good last season, so it would be surprised me if it didn't really work out now. Um, right, yeah, so first game of the season. Let's see what we're going to queue into here. Alright. So our first game here is against Nature's Gift. We're on blue coin, which I think we generally prefer. Gift usually plays Devotion these days. Um, so being able to start with one of our... Um, to be able to start with one of our um, ranger uh, griffin witches is really nice. So we obviously want to try to get mulligan away our witchers here. They are they just don't really want to play them round one. So we do three of them that are pretty easy mulligans. Um, so to start off, we have two options. We can go location. We can go for griffin witcher. Honestly, both of them are pretty decent. I think I might actually go location here. Um, and the reason for uh. I think I actually might just go Griffin Witcher here. Um, so usually you want to try to see if you can play um, your location before you play Vesemir. Because then you get an extra buff from Vesemir as well. Um, but just in case you somehow get rid of uh, my add up here later on, uh, then it's nice to have this as a flex option. So he tries to kill it, which kind of makes sense for him to be honest. Um, hopefully he won't have enough removal tools to do it. If we can keep this guy alive, he should just win us the round. Unfortunately, we don't have more ways to buff him now, so if he has like a rebuke and a circle, he will actually manage to kill it. But at least we will delay all of his engines for quite a lot of turns as well, so it's not all perfect for him either. Next turn, we will probably try to develop the Adept. Come to me, little one. That play, I think, it could be a little bit questionable. I have him running double boiling oil and Natalis, right? I didn't find any of them. Otherwise, I would always take that oil. Um, but unfortunately, we can't do anything about that right now. 
So I'll just pay that up instead. If you cannot kill the the Griffin which here, I think the value from him should be enough to to win us um, run up the round, but we'll have to wait and see. So huh. just keep on going here. Fortunately we don't have that much like swarm cards here for our for anything really. Just do this, continue eating. Probably go location next. Maybe should run that last one actually. Just try to get another one down for Vesemir. Um, so. This will likely die. Might. Hmm. I might. Maybe we just go for this. It's kind of likely just to get answered. Um, but if it doesn't, then it's kind of nice. He could just slam a forest protector here, though. That could be a little bit scary. This play is probably a little bit debatable. Might have been better just to wait one turn. He does know, that's kind of nice. And then uh, target this. Um, could just go Vesemir here. Probably fine, to be honest. We have the adrenaline requirement fulfilled now, so why not? I should also consider clicking this one. Um, now I kind of have to bleed if I want to get value from this, but it's probably fine. I'm, I might actually want to bleed him regardless, I think. Probably do, because he's running Eithne. Um Alright, so he just takes a pass. Um, I don't mind too much how this round went, to be honest. We developed our carry over. We got a leader charge out from him. He didn't get any carry. He got one circle off, I think. One circle, right? But no, no Doomka or anything. Um... So pretty happy about this. Picked up, take assault. That's nice. The Talus is not bad either. Uh, still missing quite a few cards. So what do we mull here? Huh. Maybe we mull assault. Sure. Okay. So Kelder is adrenaline four. Um, maybe I just go A here into like a Griffin Witcher. A little bit of pressure with that. And then we use this to buff up one of the witches, and now we do have the pass if we want it. This means we are we have reached for a hammer dryad or for dunk or anything like that. We can just kill it right away with the boiling oil, which is really nice. There was also a consideration just to take the Kelda right away. Honestly, it might just have been better. See what he does here. Close Dunker. Alright, so how do I do this? Dunker gives him some little bit annoying reach here. Maybe I'm just supposed to do this.
Next turn we could go Keldor. We don't need to push all that deep necessarily, but again, because he's most likely running Aethon, it feels kind of nice to try to bleep that out. Tries to protect the Dunka here. Plays into a second oil, which I don't have, so he, he's fine, but a little bit questionable in my opinion. Um, I might just go for Kelder here. You can kill it with, by activating the Dunka, which is a little bit annoying. Maybe you're not supposed to do it. Maybe you're just supposed to go like Witchers and then go for this into Leo, maybe. And just save this for like a round three finisher. Could also be a line. In that case, we could just go Witchers here. It's obviously a really big commitment. Um, maybe it's just okay. Could try to go Mentor as well. Try to see if we could if we could draw. Maybe like Keldor Leo here. Quite possibly better to go mental last turn. That's the Aethne. I'm gonna continue for a while here. Um, Let's have some engines, but not, they're not all that scary just yet. This will actually play for decent value here, which is pretty nice. Pretty decent roll from this, I think. Killing an engine. Kind of like guess where this is also going to be a huge issue if we keep going, so... Be careful of that. I should play this back row for that reason, I think. Justice. That is what I seek. This card, like you don't really want it in a short round, so we're also just gonna play that. Um so the, the decision is kinda of gonna be do we wanna commit this one as well? Um and I think the answer might just be yes. Because if we commit it into let's say like I mean I'll also just keep it honestly. Maybe just go full on leader here to have the sightman and then we, we take a pass after that. I think I kind of like that. Just play the sightman here for good value, and then we then we look to pass with the with the Quinn. Going to a four round round she round three where Kelda should play for good value. This should hopefully not get him ahead. Does it? Don't think it does, right? Now we could. So we just take a pass here. We got what we wanted from him. Um, we also have quite a lot of value carrier from the Dunka. Um, we did commit quite a lot. But I think we might just be okay still. That is, if we can top deck at least one of like some of these three. Because we have we have AA, we have Quen. You have to go justice as well. So he has a lot of carry on his last card, probably a forest protector. It's kind of interesting to see how that plays up against each other. Because forest protector is obviously a shit ton of points as well in that deck. Drew killed that nice. I don't think we want this electric mutation. This is a really good hand. So I think the line for us is we go Kelda, then we go AA into probably an Adept. And then the Adept can still transform twice, which is which is pretty good. Then we have yeah yeah, this this hand should win, I think. He has Gordon Forest Protector, which can play for a lot. I guess he could potentially high roll here, which would kinda suck. Um 
Let's just, let's just try, see if we're lucky. At least it's kind of awkward, right? He has to, like, it's a seven, he has to hit it down to three, and then he has to um, first protect it. I guess you could. No, he high rolled. That's kind of annoying. It's worth a lot of points. So circle and and um, rebuke here worth the same amount of points. So it's probably maybe got was his last card last round. Um. All right. So now probably still want to go for this. I think they transform here. I think it's probably still just the best option. Should be worth plus two, th three points, right? Let me do this into Berenga, and then we have Leo finish. I should still be quite a decent Leo with four units, like a ten. Catwitch, let's see if he high rolls it. That's another really lucky roll from him. Um, hopefully that won't be game deciding. So if we do this into Berenga, and then we transform. And I think we beat Gord here, although it is a pretty big Gord. I think we have more points than that. Hopefully. Yeah, we're good. We win. So I think we got a little bit unlucky in the end. We drew well, so I cannot complain about draws. But in terms of like random pings from his Pyro and from his Catwitcher, got a little bit unlucky. Uh, but I think all our bleed went really well. We got out the cards that we couldn't answer. And then in the short round, we have a lot of points because of our carrier as well. So that was kind of nice. Always nice to, to win the first game of the season. Let's move on to the, to the next one. All right, this time we're up against Lockdown. I think Lockdown is a pretty decent matchup as well. Um, we have Blue Coin, which means we can kind of take advantage of the Adepts here. He has to go Cop Arrow plus Lock or Invocation or something like that. The Oil is not too bad. Um, we don't want the Witcher, so we mulligan him. These are usually not great for one either, so it's fine to kick one of them, I think, and then the win or the Witcher. So we have. Erland, we don't have Vesemir, but we do have access to Vesemir. So I think the sand is kind of fine. Always nice to find location in your opening hand. We don't quite have that here. The flexibility is really nice, but maybe we will be okay. Like, if I can get this guy to go through, which is kind of unlikely because he's playing lockdown, then it would be really good. Um, but we might just have to do without it. So we start with the uh, Griffin Witcher here. And then, like, it's usually difficult for them to kill it, but if it tries to go for the damage route, then we don't actually have any target practices right now, which is kind of annoying. So hopefully he won't do that. The other sad thing about it is that usually it's just fine to go early, but they can actually... Oh, wow, okay, he's running Leo. That's not the standard version. That mm, puts in a little bit more of trouble here. Um... Let's go try to start with an adept then. We could very well lose an even from this position now that he played that Leo. Um, but we still have an assault that is usually quite good at getting without us getting us out of bad situations. Of course for the first luck, we trade out by one point by one point as well. Mm. Could go for another one here. I think that just makes sense to be honest. And basically, if these cards um, go through, then like I think we just have plenty of points. But if they don't, we will struggle. All right, that's good. I think now we do this and then we try to get Vesemir. Um, and then what do we get rid of here? Uh, could be Kelder. Honestly, Kelder's a great card, of course. But also keep it. The question is, are we running out of plays we can make? We might. I think I think I'll get rid of Kelter here. Um, I don't think he's gonna pass him when he committed the Leo like that. So I could kill that. I probably should. 
I'll just do it. Like, it's kind of awkward that I haven't developed any of these just yet. Pass here could be a little bit annoying. Um, but I don't want to risk getting in trouble either by letting that one live. Place another lock here. Surprised I didn't do that earlier. Just go for Erland here. It's a little bit risky, but not playing Erland here on one is like kind of bad. And I do feel like we should still have reach with Quinn into something if we need it. Um, Quinn into Berengar um, usually does the trick. And Vesemir comes down to a pretty decent value next as well. Do have a pass here. Could take it, but I think I like this Vesemir play a little bit too much. Would probably also just prefer to win the round if possible. Although it isn't like strictly necessary. We're double thinning here, that's kind of interesting. Alright, so we do have a pass here. If we want it. It's kind of a tough call, I think. Uh, usually you kind of want to bleed at the same time. We did manage to get off our carrier down. Um, if it takes a draw, I think we're kind of fine with it. We're better in the short round, I think. Um, like a long round against Lockton, he'll have his ball going through. But at the same time, like we also have... I feel like this draw should be okay with the carry we managed to develop here. I think I'm gonna take it. Um, could end up back Frank, but I'm a little bit worried if he starts playing some Brathens or something like that. So we'll just take the pass. Um, see what he does here. Get a coup out of him, um, which just the first coup, so assuming he's dry passing, it won't actually matter anything at all. Um, but at least it didn't go, couldn't go coup on, on Earl and right if you could actually like activate it, that could, that could have been a bit of a of trouble. So we do have adrenaline. F we don't. We have six cards actually, right? So it's a little bit awkward. Um, nothing in particular we want to play. I think location is the best card we could play here. I'll just try to see if I can mull for that. Ah, we couldn't. So this is probably just my worst card. I think. Uh, again, I just had one more turn. It would be nice for the carryover, but. I'll just drop this. Um, going to round three, medium length. Um, and yeah, like I have a pretty good hand already. Some Scythemen would probably be decent. Um, Barangar maybe. But yeah, like it's looking quite okay right now. One oil is not the end of the world either, I don't think. I could see this hand being kept, um, honestly. A Talus would be nice, but. Do we want a mulligan for it? Not sure. I could see keeping this hand. So... I guess like one issue with this hand is like in terms of... Uh, ...reactivity, what we're supposed to do. Um, I'm just thinking here, like what would actually be the best... ...opener, because we do have this, but we don't need to take that just yet. Um... We'd like to hold this one for the adrenaline. So this is the most obvious option. Which one do we take though? Do we take uh, Griffin Witcher or do we take Adept? I think Griffin Witcher is probably better here. Um, because Adept will, is a little bit slow. So it's just nice to develop one engine right away. Means he has to deal, that, deal with that before he does anything else really. I already used one Tall Punish in Leo. So I'm wondering, like, maybe he's not even playing ball, but I think he is, he probably is, but there could be a world where he's not playing ball and he's just playing, um, like, mid-range cats. Probably though he got ball, and if he got ball, he might not have Yen. Like, running double thinning and Leo means that you have to cut some high-end cats. Kind of wondering what those are. He's also running bronze slugs, so it's not from one. Brathen is probably just too good to cut, so... And he's running the coup package, so that means he's running Joachim and he's running Roderick. And after that, you don't have that much provision left if you're running ball. You could have got cup bearer in the poison package potentially to fit Leo or Wei Yin maybe, but yeah, let's see. That's definitely not the case by the looks of it. The tricky thing here is that we kind of want to 
I guess this is the downside to going for this rather than going for the other guy, right? Because... Hmm. Not really just poison, that's the other one we could just have transformed him in a way. I think I might just go for the other one of them here. Shoots like we could also go for the sidemen, but I think it might just be okay. Um Basically just trying to get more engines down. Might as well just go for the carry over here because I have a very bad habit about forgetting about that. Just doing one of the witches, no reason not to. Already played two locks. Um, I could just boiling oil that. Um, is it worth it though? Is it better just to start? I think it might be worth it to be honest. I think it might just be worth it. Then next turn we can go Kelder. He's going Ramon Lock here, he's going Rotrix into Ramon. Into Ball, okay. So now we go for Kelder here. So there was an argument to try to hold the boiling on for the Sith Dame instead. Um not sure if that would have been better. Quite possibly would have. Goes for the Yen here. Um means he got Joachim on that, which is pretty decent very much, I suppose. Um I think I'm supposed to go for this now. We kind of want to find another Witcher here. Up the tree you go, lad. Quick That's now. what we did. That's Retrieve nice. And this Actually, I, I screwed up here, okay? So this one is on me. I should even have hit the Thirsty Dame here the second time because I would have a chance to actually kill it. Um, I kind of forgot about this. So it was definitely a mistake not to hit this. Um, we did end up low rolling anyway, so it didn't make much of a difference, but it would have been a lot better if we had been able to, to kill this one, of course. This is a lot of points for him. Kinda scary, to be honest. So, alright, I think we can just go Witchers now. Yeah, I think Witchers now is just fine. Kinda curious as how close this is gonna be, to be honest. Should probably try to see if we could break his uh, his usurper as well. Not sure it will be possible, but we can try to see if. Yeah, he just goes for it here. So much to do about that. Let's see. Now he's up by quite a few points here. Maybe one played out, which has he got an engine on the board. It's not ideal. <laughs> um, but let's see. I think we're probably gonna lose here. This is probably not going to be enough. He's still got crew in hand. Yeah, so I think um, in hindsight, we probably took a little bit of a bad decision here. Taking that path, I think we should have kept kept pushing round one. Um, not being afraid of committing something like Quinn. Um, that was, would probably just have been worth it in terms of um, getting round control, being able to bleed with witches, because I think I kind of underestimated how powerful the ball is um, when we cannot deal with it. I thought we had enough carry to be able to beat it, but I think I misread the matchup a little bit. Um, and now crew on this, and then it's just triggering too much stuff. He goes for Rotrick instead, so I guess he's missing Brathens maybe? Yeah, there's a Brathens, so Brathens coming down, um, and he actually wins quite comfortably here in the end. Uh, Leo is not going to be worth all that much. Gets a nice redraw here as well. Yeah, so we just jam jam with Leo, and it's not even close to being up in the end, honestly. Lose by a 3, 5, and he hasn't even played his last card. So that's like a note to myself going, like, in the future that this matchup, it's, it's probably a lot better to try to, um, to, to play. That being said, um, if we should, like, analyze this, this game a little bit, then the mistake we did make was that we did not, um, Used the Griffin Witch had to give herself a 50 50 to kill the Dame. The Dame did end up playing for 14 points. Instead, our ability played for one extra point, right? So, actually, if I take the correct ping there and we win the 50 50, we have 13 more points, which is actually a win, right? So, 
a little little minor mistake at first, but a little minor mistake could potentially have have switched to, like one of the games. So even though like we didn't end up losing by quite a lot, I think maybe with this line you still have a chance of winning. You just need to um, be be very careful of these small things. All right, guys. So um, I think that's it for now. Um, I hope you like this type of video. Please let me know what you think about it. I will probably try to post these like two to three times a week just to keep you guys posted what I'm playing. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching the video. See you guys.